We will again get back to Slutsky equation and try to answer few more questions which might arise in intertemporal choice. So let me write first of all the budget constraint. So my budget constraint which I have already derived in the earlier recordings, it looks like 1 plus R C1 plus C2 equals to 1 plus R M1 plus M2. This is the future value version of the budget constraint which we have drawn. So if you look at it, I think we have derived it uh, the other day, mm, this one. This is the future value form of the budget constraint 1 plus R C1 plus C2 equals to 1 plus R M1 plus M2. We have already derived this. Uh, so can I also write, let's say P1 as 1 plus R that is price of first period consumption and P2 as 1. So I can write like this. So it is basically P1 C1 plus 1 into C2 plus P1 M1 plus 1 into M2. We can write like this. Right. So now when you increase R, it is equivalent of increasing P1 only. So when you increase R, it is equivalent of increasing the price of consumption today relative to the consumption tomorrow. So in this case, increasing R increasing R is just like increasing price of consumption today relative to consumption tomorrow. Right? Consumption tomorrow. So let us write the Slutsky equation which we have already done earlier. So let me just write that delta C1 upon delta P1 and I am writing T here just to show the total effect that is if R is going to increase consumption and in, uh, price of consumption in time period 1 is going to increase and you are asking yourself if the price of consumption in time period 1 is increasing how is the consumption in time period 1 changing so that is what your total effect is and this is delta C1s upon delta P1 that means when price when interest rate is going to increase price of consumption in period 1 is going to increase keeping purchasing power constant substitution effect will say that this consumption has this period consumption has become expensive consume less so this is what my substitution effect is and i am keeping a negative sign out here plus total of uh, sorry income effect is m1 minus c1 delta c1 m upon delta m. So this entire thing is a total effect. Now if you look at just this part delta C1 m upon delta m. So assuming that the good the period 1 consumption is a normal good. So if income is going to increase consumption is going to increase. So that is the reason only for this part we have written the, uh, the positive sign. What about the sign for this? We don't know. So it depends. How do you how do you uh, talk about this? Uh, so if think about it, if m1 minus c1 is going to be negative, if m1 minus c1 is going to be negative, it means that individual is a borrower. individual is a borrower then m1 minus c1 into delta c1 m upon delta m is negative this guy is going to be negative right so if this entire because this guy is positive this m1 minus c1 is negative so this guy is negative 
if this is negative so substitution effect is also negative income effect is also negative so it means delta c1 t upon delta p1 is negative right so it means what if the individual is a borrower and interest rate has increased price of consumption in period one has increased so he should consume less in period one he should be consuming less in period one so for a borrower for a borrower an increase in rate of interest increase in rate of interest means price of consumption in time period 1 is increasing must lower must lower today's consumption right so for a borrower what will happen is that uh, uh, when the rate of interest is going to increase it means that since he has taken borrowings he will have to pay more tomorrow so how should how you should be responding to this paying more tomorrow you should be rather consuming less today you should be borrowing less today so for a borrower an increase in rate of interest means that he will have to pay more rate of interest tomorrow hai na he will have to pay more rate of interest tomorrow so when he'll have to pay more rate of interest tomorrow this will induce what this will how 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 this is going to induce uh, uh, him to do anything i mean he should be rather borrowing less today right this effect induces him to borrow less and this consume less and this consumes consume less in the first period right so that is one thing that is your point 1 hmm. now supposedly if this consumer was in fact a lender so it means m1 minus c1 is positive then what happens let's look, let's look at that for a lender m1 minus c1 is positive for a lender m1 minus c1 c1 is positive now just think about it let me write the expression again so you have delta c1 t upon delta p1 equals to delta c1 s upon delta p1 plus m1 minus c1 into delta c1 m upon delta m now this is negative this is positive this is positive so this entire thing is positive now now you don't know whether this is overpowering this or this is overpowering this you don't know which term is more so that is going to decide the sign so if income effect is more than the negative substitution effect then the effect is going to be positive if it is less then the negative substitution effect then the effect is going to be negative we don't know so well for a lender the effect is ambiguous
for the lender the effect is ambiguous right so if you look at it from the point of view of the lender when the rate of interest is going to increase i mean tomorrow it is it can give him lot of extra income that uh, he would rather want to consume more today in the first period are you getting the point so when the rate of interest is going to increase i mean because those people who have borrowed from him will be paying him more so he's the lender so i mean tomorrow his income could actually increase that much that he can rather want to consume more today right so please write from the point of view of the lender from the point of view of the lender an increase in rate of interest may give him so much extra income may give him so much extra income that he will want to consume even more in the first period this is the possibility even more in the first period right so so if there is a borrower and uh, he is made worse off i mean he will be worse off uh, by an increase in the rate of interest so this is also one of the point which wherein discusses let me just write that point a borrower is made worse off by an increase in rate of interest by an increase in rate of interest right so what happens what happens here let me just draw the thing for you So you have consumption in time period two, consumption in time period one. So my original budget constraint is like this, right? This is what my original budget constraint is, and this is what my endowment is initially. This is M one. This guy is M two, and I'm consuming out here. i'm consuming it out here so when i'm consuming it out here this is what my initial consumption is so i'm consuming more than what my income in this period so initially i am a borrower now supposedly that uh, your interest rate increases so when interest rate increases what happens is your budget it moves like this so it is passing through the endowment point this this green line is the new budget when the interest rate has increased right. so interest rate has increased the thing is that if he chooses to remain a borrower if he chooses to remain a borrower he will be certainly worse off so if he chooses to remain a borrower then again on the new budget line he will have to consume at these points then only he will remain a borrower if he chooses to remain a borrower even at the new budget line he is choosing those bundles which were already available to him earlier so he will be worse off beta huh? so if he chooses to remain a borrower like this 
The question is that if he chooses to remain a borrower, he will be worse off, he will be certainly worse off. Right. So please write one point. When interest rate has increased and, uh, and the consumer is initially a borrower and he chooses to remain a borrower, then what happens? When interest rate interest increases. facing a borrower and uh, she chooses to remain a borrower She must certainly be worse off. She must certainly be worse off, right? So she is operating at the point which lies inside the initial budget line. These points were already available to him earlier, uh, available to her earlier, but she has not chosen that. So, so she is operating at a point that was affordable earlier so but were rejected and now again she has to choose on these points so it means that she must be worse off right so when borrower when the interest rate which a borrower is facing is increasing and she chooses to remain a borrower she is worse off right she is worse off if you want to write you can just write one more point if the consumer remains a borrower if she remains a borrower, if she remains a borrower, She must be operating at a point that was affordable under the original budget set but was rejected was rejected which implies that she is worse off. The reference for this is again variant chapter 10. Okay. Reference for this is again variant chapter 10. Please look at this chapter. It's a beautifully written chapter, variant chapter 10. Thank you beta.